What's up guys, it's Charlie Pangus. I am back from the grave it seems, right? I've been gone for a while. The truth is, I'm just really busy. I have a full-time job now. I have a son, a daughter, a wife, and I also have some family things going on. My dad's not in good health. Uh, life has just really not been easy, but you know what? What I've realized is that I can't let that stop me from doing the things that built me and made me me, right? And also, to be really transparent with you guys, and some of you are gonna be like, whoa, Charlie, chill. There's so many people in this niche that I just don't like. They're either copycats or they're they're just out to get you, plain and simple. You try to help and then they do something else and I'm not gonna get into the drama of it, but I've definitely seen enough to make me not like this niche anymore. But I realized again that those people do not shape me. They don't define me and I started doing this way before them. Like I've been on YouTube since 2013. So I'll just leave it at that. So I designed this graphic for a band called The Amity Affliction. They have a new singer and a new song called All That I Remember. And I thought it was a good time to just talk to you guys about this design. There's a lot going on here. So we're gonna break it down from the top to the bottom, starting with the type treatment here. What I did is I added this cool bevel. We're gonna go over that. There's a lot of like grain going on, as you can see right there. And a lot of different tonal shifts, you know, with the, you know, with the highlights right here. This is number one. And then we have number two right there, three. And then we have some AI elements with the skeleton. And I even used AI to add some flames around their logo. You could do that manually, but it took me literally like a few minutes to do that using AI. So we have a lot to go over. Let's get to the video. If you look at the layers right here, let's actually move this over. I did not use auto thresh on this, by the way, because I'm working on a new update. We'll get into that in a different video. It's gonna be a really good one. What I wanna go over is basically the methods that I use because really they're not that complicated. If you zoom in, you're going to see a lot of texture and there's actually a lot of these gray tones that I'm trying to get rid of. If I were to print this on a t-shirt, I'd probably have to do some more editing to them. So I just want you guys to be mindful of that. Uh, so we have have the processing group which is kind of the engine behind everything but if you look at it at its raw state or you know unprocessed state we're gonna start from the top to the bottom so I'll start with the typography so in the layers we're gonna go all the way to the bottom and if you look at the band name this gray layer really is just to add highlights to certain areas and it really comes into effect more so when I'm adding all my processing effects so we're not going to focus on that now but if you look at the band name group it's basically just the the text with a bevel and emboss. So if I hide that, you're going to see that it just, it gives it a little something, something, you know? And if you look at the actual type layer, you're going to see I have an inner glow, which helps separate the edges a little bit. And then I have a satin. Now this is a really cool, you know, method of breaking up the type treatment a little bit. And when you're combining it with grain, which is what I do all the time, it just helps kind of sell the effect a little bit more. And if I turn that processing group back on, you're going to see what I'm saying. So let's zoom in a little bit or actually zoom out maybe. It's almost like it adds like a heat spot to certain areas. So it's just not as, like I said, you know, typical and it's a little bit more broken up. It just gives it more interest, if you will. Um, but if you, if you were to hide the inner glow, you'll see that it makes a massive difference. It just helps those edges shine a little bit more. And again, if you wanted to, you can click on the inner glow and just change it a little bit. So everything's editable, which is what I love. That's kind of the, the new way I work is making sure that the right sort of filters are live so I can make adjustments on the fly if I need to, or maybe the client wants to make subtle changes, I can easily go in there and do that. Um, the overall composition is really the main thing. Obviously the processing is cool and all, but without the composition, it really doesn't matter. So I did generate this skeleton on Mid Journey. I'm not gonna go over that in this video, but I want you guys to know that it is AI generated. I don't really care what anyone thinks about that. Um, I know there's some people that really hate it, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, to me, it's just another resource, another tool for me to find really high quality images. I think the most important thing isn't the AI generated image though. I think it's the way I upscale the images, which I am going to show you right now. So I use something called Topaz Gigapixel AI. And basically I just drag my images into this and it upscales them for me and allows me to save them. And then I use those images in Photoshop. So if I drag this low res image in, this is actually the mid journey edit and we'll actually go to the skull part here and you can see it's already sort of working. It looks a little sharper, right? The things to pay attention to is the upscale. Obviously we're upscaling this by four times. So if you look at the original, it's 2464 by 1856. It's going from that all the way to 2856 or sorry, 9856 by 7424 for the height. That's a huge difference. It's also 300 PPI. That's the DPI, basically the resolution. 
And uh, that's again, that's a massive difference. And that makes all of the difference when you're designing graphics, especially for things like t-shirts. So when you're doing anything for print, you want the highest quality possible. I bought this with my own money. It's not a sponsor or anything like that. Um, it just, it's something that I think all designers should have access to. This, this is such a crucial tool, but uh, I like it. I think it was worth the money. And then from here, I just go export, and that's the image that I use. If you look at it in Photoshop, it does look more blurry because I added blur on purpose. It's mostly due to the grain that I'm adding later on. I add a little bit of blur to take the edge off things, but that's totally up to you if you wanna do that. But when you add the processing effects on it, it gets sharp again. And I mean, it's really almost down to the pixel. If you zoom in, you can see these pixels are not soft. And if I turn it on and off, you can see what it does. It just softens things a little bit. I think it looks nicer, to be honest with you, but it's not needed or anything like that. So again, without the processing, I'll do the same thing just to show you guys what that looks like. And I probably went a little too crazy with it, I'm not gonna lie. 0.9 is perfect, we don't need to go that crazy. But when it's all together, it looks really nice. So that's kind of how I upscale the images. Now you're probably asking yourself, how the hell did you get the logo to look like that? Because that's not their default logo. I knew if I just threw this logo in the back of the skull, it wouldn't look as cool. So I wanted to add those flames and how I did that was using ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So the way I turn this logo into the flame logo that you see on the final, is I just put it into ChatGPT and I say this exact prompt. Can you take this exact logo and add flames to it? I want it to look like it's burning bright. I know that's kind of silly, but this is what it came up with. And I said, make the flames look realistic. So it's okay to give it some feedback and this is what it came back with, which is what I, you know, I actually ended up going with because I really liked it. And I used that same image upscaler, the uh, Topaz uh, Gigapixel AI, to upscale it before using it in Photoshop on my uh, final composition. So that's kind of how I came up with it. And uh, yeah, and then, you know, the font choices I think are huge. So let's go into those a little bit. So the font that I went with for the Amity Affliction is called Perfectly 90s. I really love this font. Um, if you can find it online, I would definitely pick it up and buy it. It's worth the money. I use this font called Mythshire for the bottom. Because of the processing effects that I've applied, which we're go going to get into, whenever you add a blur to something, you're basically introducing different tonal ranges. And that's what that's basically how you get that look. So let's go try to find that real quick. Where is it at? So whenever you're adding like a displace or outer glow, it's again, it's introducing more color, more tone base. It's not color, it's actually more tone. Um, and the brighter you make the opacity, the more intense it is, right? And then you can even change the spread on it, which I actually like it not as much. See, I'm actually looking at my older edits right now and I'm like, why did I do that? But that's kind of the fun of designing. <laughs> um, you can add some more noise if you want to. I, I try to keep that at zero most of the time. But yeah, the, the intensity is really controlled by the opacity. They're, they're basically interacting with anything that has any sort of tonal shift. And that has to do with, you know, Gaussian blur too. When you add Gaussian blur to something, you're introducing a tonal shift. So let me show you what I mean by that real quick. So let's actually hide the design to show you what we're saying, what, what I'm saying, <laughs> not you. Uh, so we just have the circle and you know what, let's turn the texture off too, just so we're looking at a clean circle. Now, obviously nothing's happening, but if I were to introduce, let's say, uh, let's just do an outer glow. You can already see that there's something happening there, right? And that's just because we're introducing more tones, if you will, by using that outer glow. And if you change the color of that tone, it, it introduces different colors as well. So the color of, of the outer glow is going to affect it. Now, another way you could do it is just by adding a simple Gaussian blur. Watch this. There you go. Same exact thing. And, uh, you know, you can also use a field blur. You can use a motion blur. So you can kind of see how powerful this is and why I love using it. So anyway, you can have fun with it. But really, the engine behind this whole thing is a gradient map. It's set to lighter color. You can also use, like, screen, multiply, um, overlay. I like lighter color. That's just what I ended up going with. And I want to show one more little trick that a lot of people don't even do. At least I don't see that they do. I had a black and white adjustment layer in the middle of the gradient and above the noise. So right here is the noise. It's just set to a simple overlay. And we'll go into how I make the noise too. I'm kind of giving you guys a lot of sauce real quick. But uh, this black and white filter here, or it's an adjustment layer, it actually allows you to mess with the, t the, the ranges as well. So watch this. If I mess with the, the red, you can see that it actually gets rid of the red a little bit, right? If I go to the right more, it makes it super bright. So I can actually control this to give my my design some more clarity, some more dynamic range, if you want to call it that. And if you want, you can even adjust the, uh, adjust the yellow. So you get some really cool effects using this. 
Now, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of looks cool, and I probably would have went with that if I would have done that, but I didn't do it. Now, I don't have these colors in my artwork, as you can see, so it's not doing anything, of course, but if you were to have cyans or blues or magentas, you're gonna be able to adjust them. I think I have a little bit of green. So by changing these colors, you're actually affecting the image that you imported. So if I turn off processing, you're you're affecting these colors right here. And then obviously the noise is really simple. To make the noise, I basically just create a blank layer, fill it with 50% gray. Normally I add just normal noise or I go to camera raw filter and add grain that way, which I, I know some designers do that. I think it sucks to, to be honest with you compared to noise. And then normally I just add a little bit of blur to the noise just to break up the noise just a little bit, not too much, and just make it slightly bigger. Let me see real quick. We'll make it slightly bigger, not much. It just changes the look a little bit. See, there's the before and the after, before, after. Definitely a big difference if you really look at it. You can also just go black and white, which is what I've done. I created a black and white version. I'm not gonna go into that version in this video because I wanted to focus on the main version here. And then to top everything off, I just add my texture, which is the one that I have on my website for free. You guys can go to charliepingus.com and download this on the texture gallery completely free. It's the uh, Plastisol texture that I literally handcrafted, handmade using my own blanks and it's, I mean, it really is a great texture. It's easy to use. You just slap it on and throw a multiply or, you know, maybe like an overlay blend mode. And it's a uh, really, really powerful. Sometimes I'll mess with the level adjustment on it. So I'll press command L and try to, you know, bring out the darks a little bit more on it. It depends on kind of like what you're going for though. If you want to add a little bit more sharpness, you can always bring the highlights up. But that is pretty much it, my friends. When all is said and done, this is what it looks like. So that's the design. And the way I mock up my artwork, I'll just give you guys a quick little extra freebie here. We'll go create. And you can see the dimensions here. So what I'll do is I'll go into my files. So I'll slap my t-shirt fabric texture right here. And I'll just copy my design, paste it, change the blend mode real quick. I'm actually working on some templates right now for these. So... Those might be done sooner than you think. I don't know yet. And then I'll just change like, you know, maybe the midtones a little bit, not too much. And then we'll take these and just blend it a little bit. And there you go. Now I have the mock-up. I can save it as a PNG, export as PNG, save it on my desktop, and then upload it to Instagram. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this video taught you guys something new. And if it did, leave a comment, leave a like. Let me know what you guys thought about it in the comments. And by the way, it is so good to be back. I'll catch you guys in the next video.